Hello everyone, I am Rahul. I'm one of the co-founders at ImageKit. I flew in from India yesterday and only for this conference and I was watching a news video on my phone yesterday. And since I'm on international roaming, it obviously took a lot of time for me to buffer that video to load that. And I knew for every second of that HD video that I'm loading, I'm going to get a huge bill when I go back to my country, right? So this talk that I have becomes all the more relevant right now, but where I'll talk about how do you optimize videos if you're working on a really uh, video intensive experience on a React app, or it could be any other platform as well. How do you optimize and stream videos correctly and natively inside your application? Now this isn't an actual video, it's just a GIF. It would have been very embarrassing if I would have embedded a video and it would not have played during the talk. But as users, all of us have actually seen something like this. You start playing a video and it just keeps buffering. And it's really frustrating, right? It's, it's not a great experience for your users or visiting your app to actually experience this. And as developers, we need to find out ways in which we can optimize a really large MP4 or a MOV video that's stored in your cloud. And how do you deliver that correctly in your React application, right? But video streaming is complex, right? It's not easy. There are multiple resolutions, there are codecs, bit rates, you have to deal with audio, video, subtitles. You have to store these chunks somewhere, then you have to configure a CDN to deliver it, right? So it's really complex. In our experience, what we have seen, a lot of developers either just completely skip the optimization part, they just deliver that high quality video directly to their users, or maybe they'll create one variant of that video and just deliver that one variant to every user on mobile and desktop, or you'll end up using a platform like a YouTube or a Vimeo to host your videos. While YouTube or Vimeo, they take care of your video streaming, but you either end up with a lot of irrelevant ads for your users, which is not great for user experience. You cannot customize the player or the branding to your look and feel of your app. Or you end up duplicating the storage between, let's say, your cloud storage on S3 or Google Cloud, and then you have a duplicate storage that exists on Vimeo, for example. A better solution is to use the ImageKit Video API, which is nothing but a very simple URL-based real-time video optimization, streaming, and transformation that can work very easily with your infrastructure and integrates with your code very quickly. I'll just show you how this works. So you can keep uploading all your content, whether that's images, videos, etc., in your cloud storage. You would probably be doing that even right now. So you can just keep uploading all your assets in a cloud storage the way that you have been doing right now. It could be any popular cloud storage. It could be a web server. It could be private. It does not matter. Just keep uploading your assets wherever you are uploading them. And then you just connect that storage to ImageKit. When I say connect, it's very simply connecting it like an origin to a CDN. We are not really going to pull the assets from your bucket. It's just a connection that exists, which will allow ImageKit to pull in the asset in real time when you access something via ImageKit. Now, in this example, I've actually used the video component in our React SDK. You can see that I have two parameters here. The first one, the URL endpoint, is nothing but an identifier and a CDN-enabled domain name for your account. And then the source, video.mp4, is actually just the path of the video file in your storage. When you do that, ImageKit actually goes back to your storage, gets the original video file, does all the optimizations and transformations in real time, and delivers an optimized video that's suitable for that particular device. So if the device supports WebM, we will automatically convert the video to WebM. We will automatically compress it to the right size so that it starts loading quickly. In this case, the video component actually renders the standard HTML5 video tag that you must be familiar with. But when you use this, you're still loading just a single video file. Right? It's, if you would have seen YouTube and your network speed fluctuates, you would have seen that YouTube automatically switches between a 360p video to a 720 to a 1080 and goes back and forth as your network fluctuates. Right? This actually does not do that. This is just a simple single video file that's getting streamed. But in ImageKit, you can actually also enable adaptive bitrate streaming directly from the URL. All that you need to do after that same video.mp4 URL, you just append IK master m 3 u 8 which is nothing but a suffix to enable HLS-based adaptive streaming. And then in the parameters, if you see, I have 360, 480, 720, and 1080, which are the variants that I actually want for my final video. 
And I can use this with any player of my choice, right? It can be Video.js, it can be a React video player, it can be JW, EXO player, whatever you want, whatever look and feel you want for that player, that's completely up to you. ImageKit in the background takes care of creating all of these variants, dividing your longer video into smaller chunks so that they load quickly, and the player takes care of adapting between the different resolutions that you have, like 360, 480, etc. Now, since this is a lightning talk, I won't go into all the features, but you also have URL-based transformations. So if you see in the example here, after the video.mp4, I've just added a width and a height parameter. So let's say you have a portrait video and you want to convert it to a vertical aspect ratio that fits into, let's say, a, an Instagram real kind of an interface. You just need to add the parameters to the URL or you can use the video component where I've added the transformation as a part of the component itself. And in near real time, ImageKit actually modifies the video to the aspect ratio that you desire. You can also create video thumbnails, you can create shorter video trailers, and there are a bunch of transformations that you can do on videos in real time. The end result is you do not end up duplicating storage between, let's say, your own cloud storage and a third-party platform. ImageKit is working with your own cloud storage itself. Uh, it works with, even if you wanted to work with your CDN, that can also be done. There is no manual processing that you have to do. You don't have to take care of manually setting up a CDN or listening to webhooks or you know, when the processing completes. It's just a simple URL-based API that you can integrate and use directly in your React application or, for that matter, any other framework that you use to build your websites and apps. So if next time if you're working on a video intensive application and you're looking to optimize and stream videos, do give ImageKit a try. We are there at a booth upstairs, so if you have more questions, we would be happy to answer any questions that you have about video streaming or any other media optimization in general. Thank you so much.